Hi, it's Lexi from Lexi Rose Reads and today I'm coming at you with my one and two star reads from 2023. So I decided to do one and two stars because there's only 10 and it makes a nice round even number there. So a lot of these I picked up for readathons and to be completely honest I probably wouldn't have picked them up otherwise but you know I still gave them a shot and a lot of them the writing just wasn't for me. It, there's there's plenty of good reviews on them it's just the writing wasn't there for me you know. So up first I have Beautiful Ruins by Jess Walter and I got some notes here because <laughs> I read these over the course of the year and I need to jog my memory. But Beautiful Ruins is a historical literary work. Um, it's like was like advertised as a very great literary work and it fell really flat for me. Um, I honestly only picked it up because of the amazing readathon hosted by Brianna from Four Paws in a Book and um, for the coastal prompt and that was pretty much the only reason I ever picked it up. Um, I didn't care about the characters. They weren't very likable. They were actually like I don't know if they were trying to go for like likable like oh look how hard their life are but like I just found them very unlikable. I couldn't get behind it. It also has um, a dual timeline which I'm usually very okay with a dual timeline. It's actually one of my favorite things in books when you're like jumping back and forth. However, Beautiful Ruins jumps back and forth a little too much. Like literally about every 20 pages we're jumping back and forth and when you're like in a three four hundred page book jumping back and forth every 20, 20 or so pages is excessive. You know like it was hard to keep track of the timeline. What time are we in now? You know like it just wasn't for me. Like this is too frequent too much. And from what I've seen online, I'm not the only one who shares that sentiment. <laughs> but like I said, there are plenty of good reviews on these books. I just, this one fell very flat for me. The next one I have on this list is Barbarian's Choice by Ruby Dixon. Um, I read this <laughs> with Brittany and Leandra during their um, Ice Planet Barbarian sprints. And I think the general consensus in the sprints was that this was a bad one. <laughs> um, again, my notes, literally my first note just says, what the fuck? Um, because that's my thought the entire book. There's a very weird age gap. Well, it feels like an age gap. I don't really know how they the, the Ice Planet Barbarian aliens age necessarily. But um, she's very childlike. She seems like she's a 13 year old girl and he's like a 30 some year old man and it's very weird and made me just sit there and go what the fuck for most of the book <laughs> but again there are plenty of good reviews on good reads and story graph for it it's just i couldn't get what the fuck out of my head <laughs> book three on this is josh and hazel's guide to not dating by christina lauren Usually Christina Lauren books are a good hit for me like usually I'm all about them but uh this was the worst one I've read. Um and I had a vlog clip I did when I back when I read this and I don't know I want to say August September is when I read it and um I was gonna give it a three star but I talked myself down in that vlog. <laughs> to a one star review <laughs> and I guess one of some of the biggest problems for it for me is there is um a little bit of a spoiler here but a pregnancy scare trope type thing um but it doesn't resolve like they don't you don't see them go anywhere to like figure it out it's just like she finds out she's pregnant and she goes to the bathroom and she's bleeding and they just jump ahead three years in time and that was not resolved and I have a big issue with it like you need to flesh that out you can't just leave your readers hanging on oh my god what happened I also it jumped three years in time I have a big problem in a lot of books where for the ending of the book we just skip ahead in time like years ahead of time 
they did it in the Hunger Games, you know, they did it in Harry Potter. I'm not about it. Like, we're not going to skip years ahead of time and that be our ending. It's a cop-out ending to me. You just didn't know how to end it. So you're like, we're going to jump ahead in time and everyone lives happily ever after. Like, I don't like that. Cut it out. I'm not here for it. Um, my other thing with Josh and Hazel is there's a lot of secondhand embarrassment. Like, I would be so embarrassed to be near Hazel. I'm sorry. Like, I felt secondhand embarrassment reading some of the things she did. If one of my friends was acting like this, we would not be friends because I am embarrassed to be your friend. You are not going to act like this in public. That's embarrassing. <laughs> sorry, but not sorry. Four on this list is Out of His League by Caroline Richardson. I picked this one up for Get a Clue um, for the sports book and um, sports romances are not my thing. Um, I tend to not like them. I tend to find them very boring and cringy. And this is what this is. It was boring and cringy. And, you know, I should have known better. One, because I don't like sports romances. Two, because this was pu published by Wattpad Books. And digression, but Wattpad, um, in personal opinion, has really tanked in the last decade. Because I remember being on it when I was like 11, 12, 13. And one, you didn't have to have an account. If you wanted to comment, you had to have an account. But just to read, you didn't have to have an account. But now you have to have an account. And then they added ads. And not like, oh, there's a few ads here and there. There's an ad after almost every chapter you read on that book, any on that site anymore, or that app. Unless you want to pay like $10 a month to not have ads. And it's ridiculous. And they're not like just like pop-up ads. They're video ads that are very loud like the volume is set to 10 all the time on them i i can't vibe with it wattpad books should not be publishing books like this is very bad like i'm sorry wattpad is tanked and the things that are actually being published off that i can't Two with this book, um, it's very insta love. Like they meet in an airport and they're instantly in love and they're gonna go back to his hotel and have sex. I'm like, okay, one night stand, but you're in love, I guess now. And then she just becomes like a groupie. Like you don't know him, honey. Not really, you know he's a baseball player, but you don't know him. He could be a serial killer for all you know, but you're in love with him and gonna spend the rest of your life with him, I guess. Book five on the list is The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. And this was a debut novel. Um, I can't remember when exactly it came out anymore, but I picked this one up for a readathon in the Bookish Reality Discord. They did a um, spring read-along read readathon where you have to travel through a garden like you have to read so many pages to get to the end i think it's like i want to say it's maybe like five thousand pages in a month to like get out of the garden and there are prompts you have to hit along the way otherwise you cannot escape and it did the prompt that i hate more than everything in the world and i didn't know i hated this prompt until this readathon because it made you spell things with the t with the title and the author's name. And, you know, it, they were all flowers. And, you know, some of them were okay, like rose. That's easy enough. That's four letters, you know. Geranium. Do you know how many fucking letters are in the word geranium? And... They're all over the place. I'm sorry, but these letters are all over the place. And so the one of the recommended, because they did like a, a few recommendations, was the Luminous Dead. And it sounded the most interesting because it's a horror sci-fi. And I typically like horror sci-fi. I mean, at least I like Stephen King's horror sci-fi. So I figured, you know, let's branch out to a different author who does horror sci-fi, right? This was awful. I hated it. It's about... 200 pages too long, which is, you know, half the book. Um, you could have cut out half of it. Um, and the characters are, again, unlikable and whiny. Like, I know you guys are trapped in a, in a cave underground. Like, I get it. But, like, whining about your situation isn't going to get you out from underground, you know? Like, you're still in the ground. So stop bitching and get over it. 
it was just exhausting to read because every few pages these people are complaining and a lot of people died and it was just exhausting it's like is anyone gonna make it out of the cave apparently not everyone's just gonna die and we're doing this for money okay book six on this list is a book i read towards the beginning of the year it was actually right around the time that i was moving i think i just finished actually officially moving when i read this book it was miss rule by heather walters and i really really liked um the first book malice it was amazing i loved it it was a five star book two in the duology is a one star um honestly it should never have been written in my opinion uh it put me into a slump for weeks like i couldn't even pick up a book i knew i loved because i was like i just i don't want to read any fantasy and fantasy is honest, honestly one of my favorite genres it's always going to put a special place in my heart it's like top tier it made me fall in love with reading and i couldn't after reading this book um aurora it's a sleeping beauty retelling for those who don't know um aurora's a bitch alice is a bitch reagan's a bitch everyone's a bitch in it and um the love triangle had a very lazy ending and i feel like we just got with aurora because that's what's expected she shouldn't have been with with aurora i'm sorry but like this is a cop-out ending i feel like Again, you didn't know how to end it, so you just copped out. <laughs> Hated it. Book seven is actually a book I read this week. And who knew a book I would have read this week would have made the list. But um, El Eleanor Eliphasit is Completely Fine by uh, Gail Honeyman. I listened to the book in one day. Actually, I, I read it yesterday, to be precise. Um, it was boring. I didn't care about any of it. Eleanor wasn't likable. She seemed very snootish and snobby and very narrow-minded to me. Like, you're gonna criticize everyone else. I know you're a hermit and you don't get out very much, but um, why are you judging everyone constantly? You know, I just, I can't. Did not care. Book eight is a, another Ice Planet Barbarian book and it is Barbarian's Heart. Um, this one follows Stacy and I can't remember his name at this point because their names all mixed together in my head, but he has amnesia and I found Stacy very whiny and annoying. Like I get it. He has amnesia and doesn't remember your life together, but asking every five seconds if he has his memory back because he said something that you think maybe, but like really he doesn't. He just said a sentence. It doesn't mean anything, girl. I get it, you're very sad he doesn't remember you or your child but you kind of can't force people to remember things when they have amnesia you know like mm, i'm not into the whole memory loss thing i think that made me realize this i'm like not into memory loss tropes i'm probably never gonna read a book with memory loss again because i found this very annoying book nine is a another book I read fairly recently. I read it last week. It's a uh, Baggage Claim by Julian Smith and my vlog from last week I do go on a rant about it. Um, to summarize my rant there which I will link the video so that you guys can go watch said rant in it. Um, Olive's boyfriend Logan cheats on Olive with her sister Sarah within hours of meeting Sarah and um, how Olive finds out is she gets up in the morning to get a drink of water in the kitchen because they're at the family home for Christmas, you know, back at her parents' house and um, she finds Logan and Sarah fucking on the kitchen counter. And um, everyone's apparently like not okay with it, but is like okay with it because Olive takes off and moves states away for three years and doesn't come home but everyone else is like we're having family dinners and we're just like all okay that logan and sarah got married like it's completely fine and nobody says anything like we're just gonna let the elephant sit in the room right and like i said in my rant if one of my sisters did this they would lose an arm or a leg like uh, i'm gonna fight my sister and then i'm gonna go fight him let's be honest here like this is not a thing we're doing love at first sight 
literally it's like he walked in the room and fell in love with her apparently and I'm like did he know her name even are we mythical creatures and we like find mates or something like bro and now we have come to our last book um which is actually another book I read this month I have not been having a very good reading month um it's let it snow by I feel like the biggest one on there is John Green Maureen Johnson and um Lauren Miracle I was like I wanted to say Linda it's Lauren Miracle um Maureen Johnson's short story in it phenomenal four stars loved it it was cute and I liked the characters. I liked a little bit of a romance that was going on in it. Um, John's Green one novella came next in it. And um, I think it's his worst one he's ever written. Like I've read a few John Green and I, I haven't read John Green since I was a teenager. But um, why are the teenagers driving in a blizzard and risking their life to go to the Waffle House with the cheerleaders that they don't know. I know they're the, the one set of parents is like stuck because of the snowstorm and the conference, like in a, they're, they're staying in a hotel. But um, why are the teenagers risking their life trying to get up a hill in a snowstorm? And then, you know, they slip and they almost die. And they're just like, we're gonna try again. Like, um. I feel like we shouldn't be promoting this John Green like we should maybe they should have died and that would have been like a great moral to teenagers don't drive in a blizzard and then um I haven't read anything by Laura Miracle but uh I think at this point I was annoyed with the book <laughs> and uh I was very annoyed with John Green's part and um I didn't care about the stupid pig like great there's a pig involved in the last one which felt very oddly out of place after the previous two because it was um yeah about a pig and uh yeah <laughs> I just I didn't care about the pig that's great pigs are actually pretty gross speaking from someone who grew up on a farm they're actually you know pretty gross they're not they're cute when they're babies, but then they're not very cute anymore. But that concludes um, my 10 worst books that I read this year. Go ahead. You can read the summaries for them. You know, they're all available on Goodreads and Storygraph. Just because I didn't like them doesn't mean that you're not going to like them. Um, I think the writing style for most of them just wasn't for me. You know, like I said, it's just not for me. I didn't enjoy it. It was... Mm, for me and I think I spent a lot of time annoyed and you know because I'm annoyed with the writing it it's gonna affect the rating so take that with what you will um not that you guys shouldn't read the books but I did not have a great experience with them but next week I will be coming at you guys with my top 10 books of 2023 I'm not gonna do um all my five star readings because there's over 50 star, five star ratings from this year. So <laughs> we're going to narrow it down to 10. Um, problem is I have to go narrow down that list. So I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>